All right, guys. Well, we've got everything sanded. Literally was, I don't know, around 10 hours of sanding. Um, as you know from the last time I had an update video before the junkyard video, I had the filler on and had sanded with, uh, I think it was 36 grit, you know, just to cut the filler down. So yesterday I spent the day, um, I, I prepped the door, you know, the new door on the driver's side, but also sanded the cab over and over and over. So we went from uh, 36, then down to 180, uh, which was a chore because that's a pretty big grit difference there. Then jumped to 220, which wasn't too big a deal. That just took out more of the finer scratches. And then lastly went down to 400. So right now it is sanded everywhere down to 400 grit, which I mean, for my purposes, for my, for my quality of body work and paint, 400 is good to go. I'm not gonna bother with 600. Um, but uh, it, it came out pretty good. I know there's gonna be some imperfections. Uh, where it's going to show through it's minor at five feet it's going to look amazing so for my budget my time budget my financial budget and the reality of this project the fact that it's not a you know this isn't a 67 yanko camaro this is a 67 international lodestar for what this thing is it is going to be perfect so i'm i'm pretty happy with it and i'm definitely happy that the sanding is done because i hate sanding so, I'm sorry, it's cramped in here, so I'm trying to get back enough so you can actually see. But, uh, yeah, so the cab's good to go. I've got a tiny bit of hand sanding I'm going to do real quick around, uh, like, the rear window line and some of the, you know, just where I can't get the block or the DA in, you know, so up around this lip and maybe a little bit in these channels here around the back wall. Other than that, it is good to go. Um, also, last thing I did before I went inside last night was some single stage. This new door is completely uh, prepped on the outside, but uh, I, I left it just at 220, to be honest with you, on the on the jams and the inside. And honestly, I mean, you'd, you'd really you'd not know the difference, but I also knew I was, I was shooting acrylic enamel single stage on this, which is a little more forgiving, so. Um, but yeah, the jam's all painted, the interior of the door is painted, and then I got these couple parts done while I was at it. My rear marker light, triple marker panel, and then the, uh, the battery box lid, both of which came out really, really nice. They're all set up, so we're going to get those untied and tucked away, and uh, get going on some, getting this place blown out, and uh, ready to prep and mask and shoot some some uh, primer sealer. Okay, so everything is wiped down with wax and grease remover perfectly. We are masked off. A couple little parts down here that are gonna get painted loose. Doors on. And the primer sealer's been and it's uh whatever you call it, incubation period or whatever, where it's gotta sit and catalyze for an hour. So it has been just over an hour, so it's time to start shooting. sealer is complete. Um, apparently I should not have listened to the tech sheet that told me that uh, I should put just one heavy coat um, because that first coat to be honest with you, sagged pretty bad in a few spots. Mostly on the curves, you know, where there's multiple, you know, the flat profiles were okay, but like both of these on both sides, these little nub profiles and then all along the roof line. So, luckily it's primer, and I had plenty of it, so um, I let that coat um, flash over and wet sanded it with 600 where it was sagged, and then uh, wiped it back down again, and this is uh, three to four coats on top of that, so some spots have five coats, basically. Um, to be honest with you, the bodywork came out 
far better than I expected. Um, not the best light, but I mean, there are the only imperfections left, really, honestly, are like there's dents that I really didn't fix perfectly where those mirror brackets go, but obviously there's going to be mirrors or I can see that one right there from the door handle. The door handle's going to be back on there, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, there's a couple sags inside the cowl here that I did not fix because, I mean, I didn't even I didn't even body work those welds, to be honest with you. I just ground them down, so it's inside the cowl. I'm not going to worry that much about it. Um, you know, even the probably the biggest imperfection in the bodywork is on the front edge on that roof line I, you can probably see it just barely right there in that light it's not bad at all um, you know the, the roof again is probably the worst part and that's the roof this thing's going to be three feet higher off the ground and no one's ever really going to see that very much so I can deal with that the doors and the rest of the body came out all but perfect so pretty excited so I'm going to go uh, work on my shooting range a little bit, getting things built for the new one I'm just getting set up, and let this primer sealer flash over for another hour or so, and then we're going to shoot some bass, let that flash for about an hour, and then we're going to shoot clear coat yet tonight, and this thing is going to be done. Well guys, there it is. So that's uh, two coats of uh, uh, Ford ebony black base and then uh, well it's two coats on the roof and the back wall and three coats uh, and everything else of uh, clear coat and for once I didn't screw it up um, very very minimal orange peel I wouldn't even call it orange peel it's just you know, what paint looks like um, no runs no sags this thing is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous i gotta admit pretty proud of myself for this one usually i rush body work and paint and it's like it's not my favorite thing to do but kind of decided to take my time on this and i just i'm very into this project if you hadn't noticed it's it's whatever for whatever reason more than any other project i've ever done and there's been a lot of them this one uh this one just just does it for me so it's easier to uh, to take your time and try to do it right when you when you enjoy what you're doing. So, um, pretty pretty excited about this. So, um, I think I'm gonna take next weekend and maybe take it a little bit slower. Um, not well, not necessarily slower, but not work quite so many hours on it. But uh, have some fun and start fitting, you know, trim and marker lights and all that good stuff and um, you know headliners and air horns and all the final assembly stuff that uh, that will be a lot easier with this thing on the ground and then uh, just make sure I got all my motor mount you know parts in hand and basically get it prepped and then the following weekend we'll uh, bring a skid steer home and get this thing lifted on and make it start to look like a truck again so um, thank you all for watching and this is a, a big step today so uh, the overall game plan with the whole project is like I say, after the next couple of weeks to get this cab back up on the uh, back up on the chassis over here, um, and then we got to make this thing run and drive under its own power. Um, so probably spend a few weeks here during the winter working on that. So electrical, airlines, drive shaft are the the big ones there. Power steering, obviously, another another big chunk of work. But. Uh, get all that done and then once it's able to move under its own power then I will pull this thing out you know be able to take it out in the driveway and then I'll jump back into bodywork for the the front clip basically which is a lot less than what the cab was a whole lot less but at any rate um, and then hopefully you know by springtime ish we've got that all done and it'll be kind of the, the odds and ends at that point so getting excited we're we're you know, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel finally after, I mean, I guess a little over a year on this version of the project, but almost two years on, you know, from the original purchase of the Lodestar. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.